In this video, I am showing you three watches that are not only less expensive than their Rolex counterpart, but which are also readily available and even technically more advanced. So let's get started. Given the current situation with Rolex, it's almost impossible to buy a sports steel model without having to deal with exorbitant waiting times or the equally over the top prices on the gray market. Many of you have asked me about alternatives to those super popular Rolex models, watches that are not a compromise between what you want and what you actually get, but that are truly amazing pieces that are equally as good, if not better, and that are affordable and available. So that is why today I'm showing you three watches that are at least in a one case not only equally as good but even better than their Rolex counterpart and all of the watches today have one major thing in common. They're all respected models each with their own individual character. And so before we head into the three watches I want to thank Chrono24 for sponsoring this video today. Chrono24 is the biggest online marketplace for luxury watches for commercial watch dealers and private sellers from all over around the world. Every watch in this video is going to be available on the marketplace and I will link the watches in the description box below and up here. The first watch of this video is basically equally as iconic as its Rolex counterpart and you could technically say that this watch was kind of the co-founder of Rolex's success. Of course, I am talking about the El Primero from Zenit. Many of you might know that the Zenit El Primero has passed on its movement to the Daytona. So basically, Rolex was using the same movements as Zenit in their chronographs up until the year 2000. But there are some things many do not know about the El Primero, which even outshine the Daytona in a certain way. But let's take a look at the watch first. The El Primero has a diameter of 42 millimeters, a lug to lug of 50 millimeters, and a height of 12.75 millimeters. Given the proportions of the case, the El Primero is definitely comfortable wearable for a smaller wrist, as you can see here with a 170 millimeter wrist size. The case with its 100 meter water resistance really stands out with its amazing finish. I really like the flattened and polished edges on the case as it gives the entire form a very nice and flowy look. Compared to that, the chronograph pushes as well as the crown look rather average. When going for the leather strap on the Alpermero, you get a watch that is really versatile as I could definitely see it work with nicer clothes but also looking really good with a more casual outfit. If leather straps are not your thing, you can also get the Alpermero with a rubber strap or with a steel bracelet. When looking at the dial, you immediately recognize the distinctive El Primero design with its three different colored subdials and the contrasting bright red chronograph hand with the eye-catching Zenit star at the bottom. But it doesn't only look very nice, the finishing on it is also super good. You've got the perfectly applied and very sharp looking hour markers, crisp looking lettering and a stunning sunburst finishing on the dial as the cherry on top. Additionally, you get Super Luminova on the hands and the hour markers as well. But where it really gets exciting is the movement of the El Primero. It's not only a column wheel chronograph, but also developed entirely in-house. A big plus here is that Zenit has built a chronograph movement with a 5 hertz frequency compared to the 4 hertz you have in the current Daytona movements. With those 5 hertz, you are able to measure your time up to 1 tenth of a second. And that's only the first advantage compared to Rolex. With the Zenit, you also get what so many are missing from the Daytona, and that is a date. Sitting neatly at six o'clock, we have a practical date display, making the El Primero a perfect everyday watch. But there is another feature on the El Primero that Rolex is missing out on, because compared to the manufacturer with the crown, Zenit decided to show us the amazing caliber El Primero 400B through a sapphire case bag. I love the skeletonized rotor with the star engraving, which is making this watch an automatic one, with a power reserve of 50 hours. The El Primero is a watch that many people know, but I feel like you actually have to see this one in person to really appreciate the amazing quality and design. It's really impressive that Zenit kept the 5 Hz frequency, considering that when Rolex used the same caliber, they, for some unknown reason, lowered the frequency to 4 Hz. All in all, the El Primero is leaving the Daytona behind in many aspects. The added date and the case back is a big plus and the fact that you can get this one on the gray market for about $5,500, which is like 20% of what you have to pay for a Daytona on the market right now is crazy. There's just one thing that Zenit does not have, 
long wait lists. Those who want to buy one can walk into any AD and try it on or check out the offers online. I'll put a link in the info box up here and in the description box below for you to check out and browse the offers on Chrono24. The second watch of today is a true style icon with a rich history that started in 1957, which makes this one almost as old as the Rolex Submariner itself. The Omega Seamaster 300 can compete in pretty much all aspects with the Rolex Submariner, and we're also going to find out in which cases the Seamaster is even better than the Sub. The Seamaster started out as a classic dive watch when it was designed in 1957, following up other divers like the Submariner. It has a diameter of 41 millimeters, a lug to of 48 millimeters and a height of 50 millimeters, which is a bit higher than the sub due to the bezel and the case bag. The case itself has a 300 meter water resistance, so definitely what you would expect from a solid diver. The sides of the watch have a fine satin finish, the upper surface and the edges are polished, which emphasizes the lines on the case. Like the case, the bracelet is also made from steel. The outer links are brushed, the middle link is polished. A rather flashy look for a bracelet, I would say. Compared to other models like the Speedmaster with its rather disappointing clasp, Omega really stepped up their game on this with its solid clasp with an added quick adjustment. I would even go as far and say that it works better than the glide lock on the sub. When looking at the dial, you can see one common trait that helped Rolex as well as Amiga to stay successful, and that is maintaining iconic designs. The Seamaster in this video inherited its design from the first model released in 1957. The hour markers are not applied but sunk into the dial, filled with artificially yellowed superluminova that sits right underneath the dial. The hands as well as a little pearl on the bezel are also endowed with the same yellowed superluminova. A nice touch here are the different colored looms which I really love. The bezel is a typical diver bezel, so 120 clicks, unidirectional and made from scratch-proof ceramic. I think at this point, it's obvious that the Seamaster is definitely on the same page as the Rolex Submariner, but in terms of movement, the Seamaster is definitely ahead of the sub. Omega has built in its coaxial caliber that is not only chronometer certified, but also meta certified, which means that it has been reviewed under stricter guidelines than the Rolex, as this Seamaster runs with an accuracy of plus zero to plus four seconds per day, and along the way is also completely anti-magnetic. Besides Amiga, not many manufacturers can say that about their movements and not even Rolex. Same as the Zenit, you can see the movement through the sapphire case bag of the Seamaster. Another case in which Omega is one step ahead, which brings us to another point. On Chrono24, you're even able to find them starting at 4,500 US dollars. And you can find the links to the watch on Chrono up here and in the description box below. Oh, and by the way, if the vintage look on the Omega 300 is not your cup of tea, I could also recommend the Seamaster Diver 300M. It is in a similar price range, but it's the contemporary equivalent to the Seamaster in this video. And I've also done a review that I will link for you down below. The first two watches in this video were both something for let's say average or even a little bit smaller size wrist. So the last watch of today is something for the bigger wrists out there. Even when looking at Rolex, the selection of watches above 40 millimeters is not too big. But even with the bigger models such as the Sea Dweller, you not only have to face steep markups on the RRP when looking on the gray market, but also long wait lists when trying your luck at an AD. But what if I told you that there is an equally great watch that costs significantly less? Let's say 4,260 euros because that is exactly where the Tudor Pelagos comes into play. A watch that is definitely on par with the Rolex on many levels, with some added extras even Rolex cannot compete with. So let's take a closer look and see what the Pelagos is all about. Like I promised, the Pelagos is the biggest watch in this video, measuring 42 millimeters in diameter with a lug to lug of 50 millimeters and a height of 14 millimeters. Those measurements combined with Tudor's design give this watch a massive appearance. At the case is where we find the first big plus compared to Rolex. The case of this is not made from 904L steel like the Rolex. The brushed surfaces and the polished edges on this case are formed from titanium, which means it is anti-allergic, so those with a nickel allergy do not get to wear a Rolex, but can wear this Pelagos without a care in the world. And we can continue right away with the next point, in which Tudor does not only improve on a major issue people have with Rolex, but completely pulls ahead of its big brother, so to say. 
The clasp on almost every Tudor watch is definitely lacking compared to the clasp on a Rolex. But on this model, Tudor has treated us with an enormous folding clasp with a safety catch that adds one major advantage, a special quick adjustment. So without any tools, you can quick adjust the bracelet up to two centimeters. But as opposed to the sub, Tudor has included its patented extension system, which means that while keeping the same length, the bracelet adjusts itself to your wrist size on the go whenever you may need it a bit more tight or loose. Another big plus where the Pelagos is on par with the Rolex, if not even offering a bit more, is the bezel. As to be expected, we have a unidirectional diving bezel on this watch, but Tudor finally made this bezel from ceramic, something many would have loved to see Tudor do on their Black Bay line with their aluminum bezels, for example. And I also think that it is really cool that they kept the bezel matte, so the Pelagos is still keeping its distinctive Tudor look. But let's continue with the dial because there are some details on this which have definitely made me fall in love with this watch. Given that the snowflake hands are the Tudor trademark, it is the rough 3D look of the entire dial that really stands out to me. Each hour marker is perfectly placed. The markers at 6 and 9 are exactly double the length as the rest of the Unexis. At 12 o'clock sits the Tudor logo and underneath at 6 o'clock we have the Palagos lettering with its chronometer certification and the 500 meter water resistance. At 3 o'clock is the day display without a magnifying glass. Overall the Palagos really has a very unique look and the selection is surprisingly versatile. Because you cannot only choose between different colors but Tudor has also provided us with two different versions, one for those who prefer to wear their watch on the right hand and another one for those who like to wear their watch on the left hand. So the watch in this video is made for your right hand wrist which is very unusual I might say. And so objectively speaking there is no criticism with the Palagos or anything else that would make this watch not as good as the Sea Dweller. Only the design is up to personal preference as always. But the design is exactly where the big advantage lies for the Palagos. Because when wearing a Tudor you can be sure to not attract any negative attention unlike with a Rolex model sometimes. The smooth design and the resulting understatement is appreciated by many watch lovers and I would even go as far and say that Tudor has really stepped up their game in the past couple of years in terms of innovation. You also do not have to pay extra for the Palagos or wait for an eternity. You can immediately click on the link up here or in the description box below to start browsing through all the different offers on Chrono24 starting from around $3,300. Okay, so those were three watches that are not only less expensive than a Rolex counterpart, but which are also readily available and even technically more advanced in some cases. So what do you think about the whole better or worse than Rolex debate? And what is more important to you personally? The prestige that comes with wearing crown or the understatement of the watches in this video? I'm excited to see what you guys have to say, so let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much again for watching this video today and spending some time with me and guys before I forget please make sure to follow Chrono24 here on YouTube because there is now a video online with myself in it we have Adrian from Bark and Jack we have Kai from Watchvice and Tim from Watch Gecko, and we talked to Pascal from Chrono24 about the current situation in the watch industry so make sure to follow them to not miss out and now I'm gonna wish you a great day bye <laughs>